This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, I was visited by the Tooth Fairy. Ah, the Tooth Fairy. But you know who my favorite mythical creature is? Fucking Santa Claus. My favorite mythological character is Mad Max. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, I, I, I felt like Mad Max when my tire blew out of my trailer a while back. Does that count? Uh, I mean, I'd watch it. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 257 for Thursday, the 24th of September, 2020. This is a show of two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and man, I, I gotta tell you, like, when we hit the, uh, like, like, when we softball hit the intro and we just, we have a point, <laughs> it, it, it just feels so good. Oh, it does, man. It also feels good when, when you don't botch the whole intro thing, which... <gasps> You didn't. Oh my god! That's like the that's like the third time since we started doing this show, I, like two hundred and fifty-seven <laughs> episodes ago. I need a confetti effect for the video. Woo! <laughs> 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 um, What's hey, going man? on, man? Well, we just finished a pre-show with uh, with Chris Walker of the Have a Drink podcast, and we drank and are still drinking uh, mm -hmm. tequila sunrises, and mine is a nice bright shade of pink because I had too much tequila and. Well, hmm. can you ever have too much grenadine? I don't think so, but you probably do. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, pretty good. Nice little experiment. Got back on the history of that. And of course, uh, the Have a Drink folks helped us out with that as as it has become a bit of a thing we're doing here lately. And it's pretty awesome. Yeah, absolutely. If, oh. if you guys want to be a part of that, twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Now, what was the drink last week? Sex on the beach. Sex on the beach was yeah. last week. I think from this point forward, we need to start doing something related to the drink we're currently drinking. Oh, okay. Like, so, so, so like, like uh, last week we would have talked about the times that we got sand in our cracks, and I, I, I don't, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I was never on bottom on the beach, so I, I wouldn't. Know that <laughs> Um, now what, what, what is in a, uh, what, what's in a, uh, uh, sex on the beach? Um, stuff and things. It's another vodka drink. Um, it's vodka and it's got grenadine, right? Oh my God. No, I don't think we put grenadine in it. What? Uh, oh, peach schnapps. It's oh. a vodka peach schnapps in orange juice. Okay, well, it ties in with the orange juice, and the orange juice ties in this week with the tequila sunrise, and uh, and cranberry juice. That's right. Thank you, Curtis yeah. Larock, for pointing that out. So I, yes. I I say we just keep that trend going to have something, have one 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 ingredient in common for the next time. So the next time our our next week's drink has to have orange juice, tequila, or grenadine. Huh. That's a possibility. I mean, we can discuss that in the in the post show. But, chat with but, our but we're we're discussing it now though <laughs> hey man uh, uh we we sold our trailer oh you sold your trailer we sold our trailer why uh yeah, that we, was your we, we never we never we never used it like it just sat there and we just never used hell you got almost as much use out of it as we did the last three years right yeah and that's that's what i like i kind of questioned your decision to buy the thing um if it wasn't for the, your cross-country trip going from texas to alaska mm -hmm. i would have like probably really protested hard like dude seriously like well this when, this which is a house in some parts of the country like yeah why and, and we're when we were in texas we were using it all the time you know we'd use yeah. it for soccer all the time and, and we didn't have to pay for hotels and we were buying two hotel rooms at a time and for a four-day weekend that becomes you know three hotel rooms times two uh, like six times 200 bucks a night it gets pretty expensive so th when we lived in texas it, it was a great idea and a great concept mm -hmm. we used the hell out of it and then we moved up here and well we just haven't so right it was time to let it go to a family that could a afford to pay what we needed to to get back on it so we could pay off the loan 
and B, actually fucking use it. And uh, that's okay. where it went. So yeah, we sold the trailer. They, it went out the door on Monday and it's all cleared and done. And um, sad to see it go, happy to see it go kind of thing. Yeah, those things require a lot of maintenance and yeah, uh, just just TLC, like a lot of time. Yeah, they, they require a lot of time. And and I don't have to winterize it because it hasn't frozen yet. So the, the their first lesson in trailer is you know, and we're not talking about trailer like mobile home park trailer. We're talking like travel trailer, like a thirty five foot pull behind vacation trailer. You know, camping. Yeah, trailer. fifth fifth wheel. Uh, it wasn't a fifth wheel. It was, well, it was, it was, it was literally one size. Like if you took a fifth wheel and you took off half a half of a size, you'd you'd have our the size of our our travel trailer. So yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's gone. That, that was uh, that was a big event for this week. Um, but you had you had a big event too, right? Dude, I'm I'm just I'm happy to be drinking alcohol and eating solid food right now because. <laughs> uh, I had to, <laughs> earlier this week, I, I had a tooth pulled. Oh, and was it just like any old tooth? Like, like I don't see any gaps in your smile, but I never really paid attention to your teeth in the first place. <laughs> like, <laughs> Wait a minute. Have I out? No. Um, no, it was a wisdom tooth. So, Ooh. Uh, yeah. So, a couple of months ago. Wait, 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 wait. How did you survive until the age of 43 damn years old with your wisdom teeth still in your face? Because they were fine. They were fine. Like, no issues, right? Until... Until there were issues. <laughs> yeah, until a couple of months ago. Uh, so, no, I started to have some... I wouldn't call it toothaches, but, like, you know, soreness in my jaw. Mm -hmm. And then and I was getting, like... Um, I don't know. I was getting, like, headaches that were focused on the left side of my face. And... Like just all all kinds of like uh, oh I would get like um, swelling in the back of of my jaw and stuff like that. Okay. And, and after a while, so, you couldn't just blame Steph anymore, right? Like you had to realize there was something <laughs> more going on because there was no bruising. Yeah, I was like, what what's going on here? Yeah, because usually usually she clocks me with on this side of my face, but it was on this side of my face. no. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so I I finally was able to make it to the dentist in this COVID world. Mm -hmm. I finally got an appointment. And um, went there, and they they took some X-rays and everything. And they're like, uh, "Oh yeah, um, you've got two impacted wisdom teeth, and they got to go." I'm like, uh, "What now?" <laughs> so impacted, I learned, it, it, it's not the standard verb impact, like two things like you know violently colliding. Um, it, it basically means that when it, when you're talking about a, a wisdom tooth, it becomes impacted if it doesn't fully what's the word what, it, what is the word um uh, basically like when it breaks through the the gums and right. like like uh presents itself i don't remember there's a dental word for it <laughs> anyway if it doesn't whatever the word is come out all the way and you know perfectly straight and all that kind of stuff they consider it impacted now normally if somebody's getting a, a tooth extracted because it's impacted it means it's severe like it's like it's coming in sideways or it's like growing into your jaw or right. doing something crazy um erupt that is the word erupted uh so when the tooth comes out that means it erupted um uh, so anyway but my so my bottom uh back teeth so my my uh, lower wisdom teeth both of them are at a very slight angle to the inside. And it's never been a problem before. It's never been pointed out to me by a dentist or anything like that. Never had any pain, not once ever, until, like I said, a couple of months ago. And it started to bother me. And then they were like, yep, oh, no, you got two impacted wisdom teeth. They got to go. Tuesday, I had the first one removed, the one that was actually bothering me. And... Uh, that shit fucking sucked. They, they they just did one. <laughs> they just did one because oh. they have to because they have to numb like the whole side of your face basically. Right. Because it's it's not surgery. It's not like when you're when you're 19 years old and and you get your wisdom teeth removed because I guess that's what 19 year olds do. <laughs> um, you know they actually put you under. It's like a full up surgery. You know it's like you're there for half the day. And then you, somebody has to take care of you for the mm -hmm. next two fucking days while you spit up blood and 
hate your life. Right. Um, I never went through that. Uh, this was an outpatient thing. It was done in less than an hour. They basically just numbed the side of my face, cut a little, um, like a little incision into my gum. So you were awake for all tool. this? Yeah, I was awake for the whole thing. Um, yeah, and so like the <gasps> the technician was describing the procedure before it happened, and I was I made a little, you know, I just said something like, "Oh, that sounds pleasant." And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, it's fine. It's like, it's, it, it sounds way, way worse than, than it is. Well, I should have known right then that, that she was wrong because I was making the joke because I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. I'm like, right. ah, I'll be numb. Like, it's fine. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Counter, no, it was terrible. Counter sarcasm often uh, reveals a dark future. <laughs> It was bad. Now, the good thing about it was that it was over very quickly. Like from from the time that she she like made the first incision to the time the tooth was out was definitely less than ten minutes. I'd be surprised oh. if it went over five minutes. Okay, but though that five to ten minutes was fucking torture to me. There was no actual like pain, pain. Right. But the I guess what what doctors would call pressure. Pressure. Like I felt like my jaw was being ripped out of my fucking skull. Like it was, it was not pleasant. Let's yeah. just say that. Um, but then over the last couple of days, I've been kind of just recovering from it. Um, you know, uh, the first day I I only drank liquid. I didn't. Um, oh, I had like a little bit of of orange sherbet, uh, but uh, no food that night. Then the next day I started, you know, eating, uh, you know, soft things like yogurt and stuff like that because everything was just, just sore, just sore. And you beat the now, shit out of you and stole a tooth. <laughs> yeah. So now like, you know, it's been, it's been over 48 hours now and now it's like fine. There's still, there's like a little bit of a gum flap over here that hasn't quite like grown back the way that it's did, supposed to be. Did he give you the tooth back? I did not get the tooth back. The tooth fairy came and stole that damn thing. And instead of leaving you a dollar under your pillow, she left you with a big bill? <laughs> yes! That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. When I was a kid, the tooth fairy would leave me money. Now I had to pay the tooth fairy. Like, what right. kind of bullshit is that? It's like a reverse investment. <laughs> the tooth fairy is investing in you. Like, I'll give you a dollar, I'll give you a dollar, and later on it's like, oh, I get $5,000. Um, yeah, I, I was one of the of... I was one of the lucky ones that uh, had my my wisdom teeth taken out at like nineteen or twenty or whatever because I was having yeah. headaches. Didn't didn't solve the headaches. No, just turns out that I have a sensitivity to or uh, a a particular sensitivity to highly concentrated bright light, i.e., when people are flashing their brights at me on the road. Oh, I see. Uh, I might have sensitivity as well. <laughs> Yeah. Just in that particular circumstance, though. Right. Um, so <laughs> I had five teeth, five wisdom teeth. Two, my bottom two were going basically straight forward. My top two were going out at a 45-degree angle. And my fifth one was sitting up here just chilling, and they took it anyway. <laughs> like, why'd you take that one? You know, I had an extra one. You should have left it in there. There's plenty of room now that you took out the one in front of it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, they didn't let me keep those either, but apparently they were all cut into little pieces, so I wouldn't have wanted them. Yeah. Oh, I made the mistake today of watching a YouTube video of of the the procedure. Yeah. And I was like, oh god, oh god! Like I'm supposed, I, like I'm scheduled for the second one. <laughs> like I don't know that I want to do it. Now. Like, like you're not done but, yet. <laughs> I, I already had my doubts. Like I was already like, man, this one's not hurting me. Like I don't want to be tortured like that again. I don't know if I'm gonna go through with it. And then I watched that YouTube video today, and I'm like, oh god. <laughs> from, from headache to waterboarding, what the fuck happened? What's wrong? Oh jeez. Uh, all right. Um. Tell, well, tell me about Santa Claus. I got a question for you. Oh, okay. If you could get any mythological creature to promote the streamathon now hmm. if you could take that and bump it up a notch and say the realest santa and mrs claus you ever saw 
straight from the North Pole in high def 4K video giving a spin and a, a announcement and a little push to people to help with a streamathon. How cool would that be? Dude, okay. Now that sounds that sounds freaking awesome. So like so like Santa and, and Mrs. Claus, mm -hmm. the the real ones in the North Pole. The realist ones. You talk to them about the streamathon and they're excited about it and want to promote it. Yes. That's fantastic. So that's we, that's wonderful. We went up to Fairbanks last weekend. We stopped by Santa Claus's house. We did some shopping. My wife got all giddy. We did a little video for the kids, things like that. And I mentioned that's that the their, streamathon their summer, their summer home is in Fairbanks. Uh they're 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 it's their fall and spring home. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. In the wintertime, uh, the wintertime is just all work, work, work. In the summertime, like they're out, like you, you, they're they're on Venus or something. Like you can't find them. <laughs> right. So, all um, right. So you talk to them about the streamathon. Yeah. So I, I need to write a, and I still haven't done it because I've been so busy this damn week. But I need to write a thirty second stinger for them for their read of the for the streamathon, and I'm going to capture it in four K video. So that's fantastic. So cheers to that. Well, I'm going to have Santa Claus's official endorsement for the streamathon this year. That's dude. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. That's what I'm talking about. I tried to tell them about it, and they were like, "Oh no, no, we know what Children's Miracle Network is. Of course we do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just just let us know. We'll be here." I was like, "Oh shit, hell yeah!" Just I mean, don't don't try to get them like in December because you know they're busy. They're, right, right. Well, like, but it's September. September. Like it's the end of September. We're right, getting. right. Yeah, they're taking um, visitors right now. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Um, so Mad Max, like I'm not talking about Mad Max Fury Road. I'm talking about the 1979 Mel to 1985. Gibson. Yeah, like the, so the Mad Max trilogy mm -hmm. from when we were kids. Well, you're talking about Mad you, Max and then Thunder Road. Wait, no, I'm doing it wrong here. So, so the, the second one is called Road Warrior. Road Warrior. There we go. Depending on the release. So the actual Australian movie, Mad Max 2, is called Mad Max 2. Right. Because but Road Warrior was because the first Because Mad one. Max was only shown in the United States in like three theaters for like three days or some shit. American audiences had no idea what Mad Max was. Right. So when they marketed Mad Max 2 and actually released it like a wide release in the U S they didn't want to call it Mad Max two because people would, wouldn't go see it. Uh, so they just, they called it the road warrior and, um, that, which by the way is the best of the trilogy by far. Uh, but have you, have you watched these movies in your adulthood? No. Well, I watched the, the first of the trilogy. Like, okay. Like the no shit first one where he's got Mad where, Max, where yeah. he's having like flashbacks and shit, you know, and like flashbacks is his family and all that kind of stuff. Like it's, it's, it's like 16 hours long. It's not good. Well, the first one is, isn't flashbacks. The first one is the actual, like when you see flashbacks and, in, in the other movies, it's to that movie. So Cause he's actually with his family, whatever that one is. I, I saw in my dollhood. I haven't seen the others. I honestly, I don't know if I had ever seen the first Mad Max ever. I hadn't seen the other two since I was nine, ten. Right. Which one's 11. the one where he, he he gives the dude a saw and has him chain like handcuffed to the car that's about to blow up? Oh, that's that's the first one. Yeah, that's Mad Max. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just asking. So, yeah. So that one's, yeah. <laughs> so the road, I had, I had wonderful memories of Road Warrior and, and the third one, which is Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Yeah, yeah there we go. I had great memories, but seeing it through the lens of, of an adult and actually understanding the themes and, you know, to, like seeing Max as a character that's like going through some shit, right? Rather than seeing him as, Hey, here's here comes the badass guy that's gonna, like you know, shoot somebody and then drive real fast. <laughs> he does all those things, 
but also like he's a character that's going through some shit and to see that as an adult is like really cool um plus it was just a it was a super nerdy thing that i did this week i just i watched all three of them well because you didn't have shit else to do you were half high on fucking painkillers and you had a tooth missing like you needed vengeance yeah. against the against the dentist. <laughs> pretty much pretty much but that's what i did and if, if you guys haven't watched mad max ever definitely like especially if you've only seen fury road now don't get your hopes up because fury road is is like 10 times the movie that the others are. Uh, but if you know, with, with using like your 1980s sensibility, uh, and, you know, temper your expectations. Uh, but if you, if you liked Fury Road and haven't seen the original Mad Max movies, like definitely it's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, the first one is playing on prime. I think right now it's either prime or, or Netflix. I believe it's prime. Okay. Yeah, and then you'll have to track down the other two yourself. yourself. <laughs> it's it's called Just Watch. Justwatch.com <laughs> will show you where everything's streaming and how much it costs. Yeah, and also um Just Watch isn't as accurate as it used to be. Uh right, but it's still like it's a good starting point. Exactly. It's it definitely used, it used to be point. dead on like lazy laser accuracy. You knew exactly what was where and when. Uh now I mean it gives you a good good idea. Yeah. For sure. I've, I've found quite a few prices are updated and it doesn't track the sales as well as it used to. I don't know what's going on with them or, it, or, or if they're just getting bored with the process, but yeah. Um, okay. So how well... Now, I definitely have not seen the old movies since seeing the new one, Fury Road. How mm. well do they merge? Like, is it a completely different <laughs> movie or is it like... You get the concept, which is kind of where I'm at. You're like, yeah, you understand the concept, but it doesn't seem all that related. Like, where is it out on the spectrum of doesn't fucking matter and not related to, oh, no, they're exactly the same story from different people's perspective? Yeah, no, there's some there's some discrepancies between them. Um, I like to think of, of Mad Max as uh, as like a mythological figure almost, uh, as a... Um, you know, a legend like you know, like we tell tales of Paul Bunyan or yeah. or whatever. Like he he's like a, a folk hero that that we we all have a story about him. You know, this guy that came out of the wasteland and and saved our people and then disappeared. You know, right? Because if you watch each of the Mad Max movies, even though there is a timeline and there are things that that cross over from from one movie to the next. Each story is completely encapsulated in itself. You don't have to see any of the other ones to get what's happening and, and basically understand the character of Max. Right. And that's the same with Fury Road. It, it's it, it's it encapsulated in its own in its own thing. But beyond that, like if you get all nerdy and geeky about it like I do and want to see where it's at on the timeline and all this kind of stuff, it doesn't jive. Like it does not fit into the original trilogy's timeline okay you could you can force it in there but you're gonna have to like turn a blind eye to certain things like uh references they make to like current event type stuff because the first movies take place in like the 90s like the 1990s mm -hmm. uh, but fury road references things that were happening in like the 2010s and and like real life stuff right. so uh doesn't quite work fair enough fair enough <clears throat> Um, what do we, what what do we usually do about this time? Well, so normally at this time we would tell people that if they want to support our show, mm -hmm. they would go over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Mm -hmm. This is a, a, a great time to become a patron because we're not charging patrons anything, but you still get all the benefits of being a patron. Which what are what are those benefits? I, I well before before we get to that, we have currently paused our subscription sir. Like we we've, we've paused our Patreon account. Mm -hmm. And I I tell you what. Now you are going to say this is overly political, but I don't give a shit. If Trump wins the election, we are starting our Patreon back that day. Okay. If Biden wins the election, we'll wait until the coronavirus is over. <laughs> okay. So if you are one of the people that just don't care, now you have a reason. 
Extend you out that it. pausing. Because let's face it, if Trump wins, I'm going to need the Patreon money to fucking drink my sorrows away. <laughs> and I have no position. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You can't argue with it on on air. <laughs> but also, but also vote. Like voting yeah. is important. If you're not registered, register. If you don't know if you're registered, if you've voted in the state that you're living in, like if you've voted there before, you're registered. If you've recently moved to a state and haven't voted there yet, or know for sure that you registered in that state, you're not registered. So register. Do it now. Today. Yeah. Mo- most states do something akin to what Alaska does, where you have the opportunity to register when you renew or get a license. So if it's your first license, they present yep. it with you. And every time you renew, they check your registration status. So that's one of the, yeah, th- one yeah, of the yeah. things I'm proud well, of. too. I'll, you know, just, just check your registration, because why not? Um, there's yeah. there's definitely websites. Go to an official, like your state's uh, voting awareness website, or uh, just just Google it. Google your state and voter registration, and it'll come up, and you can actually you can verify whether or not you're you're registered. Exactly. So meanwhile, we got a bunch of free stuff on there: extra conversations, extended episodes, some old shit from way back in the day. Eventually, if I can ever get my life together, my book will be on there. My book of poetry will be on there. Um, it's all digitized. I just need to get it actually like sorted and put it in a format that others can read it. So that'll be on there. Um, but for now, vote against Trump. Just because of uh, yeah, or, <laughs> damn it. Just become one of the numbers. One of the numbers of of the ritual misery supporters. Patreon.com slash Ritual misery. Um, yeah, and also if you if I disappear after voting day and you don't know where I'm at, but then I have a sudden uh, criminal record in Washington D.C., you know why? Uh, all right, dude, it's about this time right here. What time is it? Ken, he's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. I literally put Stephen Cogswell. I, I, I literally put on uh, on on Twitter. I was like, hey, I just need no. Where, when, and if I need to be prepared to defend, to fight, to stand or march, like I'm so fucking fed up, and I and I just have, I don't I don't need this job. Like I can just fucking do shit like that. And I, why would I waste my position? Hey man, you got a game for us, brought to us by Stephen Cogswell. Yeah. So this week's game is called because it starts with A. Any guesses? Any guesses? How, how deep in your pocket are you reaching for these game ideas now? <laughs> so I named it this because um, a, a well-known story of why Jeff Bezos named his company what he did uh, was because, well, one of the reasons anyway is because Amazon starts with A and he likes his things to be at the top of lists. Okay. Like his own name on the douchebag list? Got it. <laughs> so uh, this this week's quiz is about Amazon. Oh. Because we're going to talk a little bit about some Amazon stuff later. So oh, let's shit. lead it to it with the quiz about Amazon. Seattle, 1996. Um, <laughs> in his garage right. with his wife. In which year was Amazon founded? 1996. <laughs> oh. I will give you choices. I've actually got multiple choice for most of these questions. Oh, thank God. And 1996 doesn't even appear as a choice. So 1992, 93, 94, 95. 95. Ah, Still not. It's 1994. Yeah. I knew it was late. It was late. It was like right at the end. Like we were just figuring out how to do sex and he was forming Amazon. (laughs) But he didn't, he didn't start out calling it Amazon. What was the original name of the company? Oh, this one I should get, but you're going to have to give me the options. All right. Your options are Cadabra, Relentless, Abra, Bezos. Abra. And yes. Cadabra. I, that was my second choice. <laughs> and the reason he changed it from Cadabra is because somebody told him, or somebody, a, a lawyer he was speaking to, misheard what he said and thought he said cadaver oh. and he was like oh no like we can't we can't have people mixing that up fair enough 
So, yeah. All right. Um, this one, you should get this one without the choices. Amazon's initial product offering consisted solely of what? Books. Very good. Very good. You got your first point. Thankfully. <laughs> In which year did Amazon become a publicly traded company? Your choices are 1997. 1998. So you're saying 96 isn't even on this list either. Fuck, man. 96 is just way out of there. <laughs> All right. So your choices are 97, 98, 99, or 2000. Um, I'm going to say 99. You're going to go with 99? You would be wrong because it's 1997. Oh, okay. Well, fuck me. Yeah. IPO was uh, $18 a share back then. Sounds yeah. like a bargain today. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, <laughs> in which year did Amazon first become profitable? Oh, so your choices. Your choices are 94, 97, 99, or 01. Still not 96 on the list. This is bullshit. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, 99. Eh. 2001 is the correct answer. Oh, gee. Um, and that's because they, they turned a very, 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 very tiny profit in the fourth quarter of 2001. But it wasn't until 2003 where they were able to to post a profit for the year. Gotcha. Yeah. So it took a long time. It took like a decade for the company to actually be a, a profitable entity. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to think that Amazon's only been around for 20-something years. Yeah, it's pretty wild. And also, it's hard to think that Amazon's already been around for 20-something years. <laughs> All right, this one, this next question, I do not have multiple choice for. And in oh. fact, I've only got multiple choice for one more question on this list. Uh, and it's not this one. What was the name of the failed phone developed by Amazon? Oh, for fuck's sake, it was so stupid. <laughs> that might as well be my guess it was the so stupid oh so very close it's the fire phone that's it damn it fire phone is what we're looking for yeah because that had eventually a, had a 3d display and all kinds of craziness and uh amazon lost something like 183 million dollars that year and um yeah like yeah this wasn't a good idea let's go ahead and scrap that <laughs> All right, uh, this one, you should get this one pretty easily. Which social streaming site was acquired by Amazon in 2014? Social streaming site? Um, hmm. It's in 2014, right? In 2014, yep. Wow. Ah. Uh... I mean, I, 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 there's so many variables here. I'm going to say Twitch, but I think it wasn't Twitch. It was Justin TV. The correct answer is Twitch. Oh, okay. I was about, I was like, oh my God. Like, no, the, the top, I don't remember when Justin TV switched over to Twitch. Like when they, when they, when they did that rebranding and the people that originally owned Justin TV, just as Justin TV didn't sell to Amazon, right? They sold it to somebody else. And then that person sold it to Amazon and it happened in like really quick succession and they changed the name in that middle time. And that was like crazy times for everything online. Yeah. I, I'm uh, Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was definitely Twitch, though. Look, I'm not fucking okay. Tom Merritt. I don't remember all this shit all the time, all right? It's not just... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's Tom Merritt, except he, for Tom Merritt. He, I'm not even sure Tom Merritt is Tom Merritt sometimes. He forgot about <laughs> he forgot about uh, 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 Slack topics today. Like He's like, hey, where's that link you sent me? I was like, it's in, it's in the thing. He's like, oh, you mean right where it's supposed to be? Like, <laughs> <laughs> It happens to the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, which supermarket chain was purchased by Amazon in 2017? Whole Foods. Whole Foods? Whole Foods would be correct. It's not Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Like, you got to get that. Whole. It's, it's got to yeah, come from back like, here. It's kind of like the uh, like when Stewie Griffin says, cool whip. Yeah, cool, cool whip. whip. 
Like, full <laughs> <fro> foods? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. I can't even do it. Oh my gosh! All right, this is this is your final uh, multiple choice question. Amazon Prime launched in which year? And your choices. Ooh. I'll just give you the range. It's is oh four to oh seven. Oh, that's a good question. Um, let's see, where was I? I wasn't in Okinawa, so it wasn't 04. But I'd heard about it in Okinawa. I'm going to say 06. You're going with 06, and that makes you incorrect because it's 05. Of, of course it is. <laughs> still not, still not 96. That's right. Yeah, ninety six wasn't even on the I list. I know it's still not on the list. I mean, we're done. Do, we're done with any list. We had multiple, <laughs> multiple choices, and it wasn't it, ninety six. Didn't make any of them. <laughs> Shit. And uh, spoiler: nineteen ninety six is not the answer to number ten. Uh, but I think you're going to know the answer. What is the name of Amazon's e reader device? Oh, the shitty Kindle. <laughs> Shitty Kindle is correct. Ding, ding, ding. That's so the Kindle actually marks the speaking of Tom Merritt. The Kindle actually marks the first time that I, I interacted with Tom Merritt in any way, shape, or form because that's what I, I saw a Kindle out in the wild, the first edition Kindle out in the wild, and I emailed Buzz out loud or I, I voicemailed Buzz out loud mm. and it made it made the show. So, yeah, there you go. There's a little fucking wraparound tie in and shit. Nice. Well done. So, um, unfortunately, so I have the stories, but I didn't get the D. You did not get the D. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're unable to to secure the D. How, how many balls short of the D was I? One. One ball short. One ball short. Damn. Yeah, five out of five. You did not get the D. Just one ball short of the D. All right, fine. You got beat by the D. I did. A whole Something. ball. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. All uh, right. But yeah, so why why are we talking about Amazon today? I was wondering the same thing too, but uh, then I remembered I'm drinking tequila and this shit happened. So <laughs> Amazon so had a huge tequila. announcement today, a big announcement. Uh, lots of different items released, or not released. I don't think anything was actually released, but a lot of things no. announced. Lots of announcements, though. Lots of announcements. Yeah. Um, um, so uh, you want to run down them real quick and uh, we'll kind of... Just... Yeah, so a couple of them I'm not I'm not real excited about. You can interrupt me as I move by them if you have something to say. But okay. but uh, new echo, uh, new echo, echo dot, echo dot clock, echo dot fucking what is it? Kids, echo kids or something? Yeah, yeah you... echo dot. I think. Um, and, and the de and the new echo show ten. Echo show ten. Okay, actually, I do have something to say about the echo okay. show ten. Uh, but all of the other ones are basically just uh, just updated versions. They're like you know ball shaped now instead of like you know hockey tubular puck. or hockey puck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending on which, yeah, the dots. Are, yeah. Anyway, they all look like like balls now. <laughs> which I guess if you put them next to the old echoes, like first gen echoes. Yeah. Uh, never mind. Never mind. I so uh, real quick on this, um, we're gonna do this uh, IQMZ Tech style where we each have one thing to say about it okay got it let's um get, i'm glad there's a new aesthetic and new processors they look like balls <laughs> next item <laughs> <laughs> all right um the echo show 10 okay echo show 10 i should actually be like showing some of this on the website if i was a producer worth half a shit and i wasn't drunk on tequila yeah <laughs> let's try that i oh, still got a picture of chris on there cool let's let's hide that no that's hiding <laughs> me live production folks that's how this goes okay now let's expand kent so he's actually visible on the screen without like look okay there we go all right cool yeah we're good we're good so there's the echo show or the echo echo dot and echo dot clock which um and then you said the the, the well let's just go down the fucking list we're we're bad at this game um okay, good the euro six and the euro pro six 
so this is the this is the mesh system, right? Yes, the, the mesh, mesh Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi system. Yep. Yep. Um, cool. I mean, the more players in the game brings prices down. I, I like that. Yeah, uh, my thoughts are nothing new, slightly updated might be exactly what you're looking for, Kent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's fine. Um, your thoughts? Do you have anything to add to that? No. All right, what's next? The ring car alarm and ring car cam. I think this is pretty cool. Um, why not? I mean, it's like having you know your ring doorbell, but like it's in your car. It's so like if you're if somebody opens your car or breaks a window or something like that, you get a notification on your phone. Um, if you get the one with the with the camera, it's like you can actually see the the guy smashing your window out with the baseball bat. And uh, I think that's cool. I'm surprised actually no, that nobody's done this already. Ring car alarm, not so interesting to me. The fact that the ring car cam shows outside and inside. And if you say... Uh, ring or or the A word, I'm being pulled over or whatever, it starts recording internally, ah. automatically, is fucking right, right. brilliant. Why is this not everywhere? Yeah, well, I think I think you can do that with, with Siri. Like, I think you can tell, you, I could, like, you can say it to you your can. phone and it'll start recording. You can, but this way you don't have to have something in your hand hitting the Siri button or whatever. Like, you can just say it and it just activates. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. This is this is super cool. The um, the only additional thing I'll add to that is that initially this is only going to be available on Teslas. Uh there's conflicting stuff about that because Teslas. Are, uh, anyway, yeah. We, uh, I'm not sure about the accuracy of that statement, but it's not far from a truth. Um, the Ring always home cam. <laughs> okay, this thing. This thing. This is a drone. That lives in your house. It's about the size of your fist, probably. Or like the size of your, your phone. That's one of the problems. There's it, nothing in this picture to bring it to scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, could, this thing could be dock. like eight inches fucking wide and buzzing around the house. It could be one inch wide and barely be seen like a fucking gnat. Or it could be like two feet wide knocking shit over as it flies to the house. There's just not enough info on this thing. <laughs> Curtis says it's a floating Roomba. Yes, You're, it might be look, that low. If you have hardwood floors like I do, that's what this is, because it's just going to blow the dust in the corners everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but this thing flies around. It's a helicopter flying around in your house. It's a security drone that flies around your house. I mean, what's that? Are we going to put weapons on this thing? Right. Like, is that is that like... Like Gen Two is gonna have like a little machine gun or something. Oh, on it? just like, just a laser pointer that can really accurately target eyes. Like, like I think that's next, man. That's I, next. I this the concept of this excites the sci-fi fan in me. The execution might be a totally different thing. As of now, it's not on my purchase radar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and they said I'm not sure what it means exactly, but they said that it's it's by invitation only initially. Curtis said, so, "Fuck with your pets." Ring always home, always home cam. I, <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine this yeah. flying around your house and Billy Badass just fucking swatting it the fuck out of the sky one day? Oh, she would, dude. She would. She would springboard <laughs> off of a, a chair in the kitchen or some shit. Just fucking. Like Marvel hero style, she, she would she would build a, a, a Rune Goldberg machine just to tackle this thing as it fucking floated around the house. <laughs> Dude, it would be a target as soon as that thing made an appearance in the house. She would be making plans. Not I'm even out of the box yet, and she's like, "Oh no, I got you." <laughs> yep. Now the dogs would be scared shitless of it. Right, they would just but... run. You 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 yeah. find out where the where the where the always home cam didn't go because it'd be where the dogs piddled. <laughs> right. All right. All right. Now onto the Echo Show 10. The new Echo Show 10, or I guess. Eight, Echo 10, Show eight, 10. Five. Yeah. yeah. So it's the uh, new you, one, but yeah. It's... What are your thoughts on this thing? Same aesthetic update as the others. I like my Echo Shows. I think they're they work pretty well. It's slightly concerning that it follows you and tracks you around the house, but I mean, Netflix while I'm doing dishes. So there's that. Yeah. That was, that's really the only comment I was going to make too. the, the echo show 10, like it, it's on a, it's on a pivot, right? Like it literally will follow you around. 
like it kind of to me it kind of goes hand in hand with the security drone like this is like howl or some shit like it's it's not just a camera that's on it's also like following your movements like it's watching you oh my like, god literally can you imagine mounting this to a, to like motorizing this and mounting it to a uh, uh, a mic arm, and then like this oh could be God. that like th- this could be the fucking thing from from Wally, floating around and following you all the ways and shit. Oh my God, someone's gonna do that. That's gonna happen. That, that's gonna be yeah. The best. Oh dude, we're getting we're getting so close. Like we get closer to Wally being real. Every day, like in multiple multiple ways. Oh my god! Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fire TV stick and Fire TV stick light. This is an updated Fire TV stick, and then the new Fire TV stick light. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. More, more products bring the price down, make it more available to everybody. Cool. I, right. I don't. I don't see. I, this is not a high demand item in my house, but we are already well past that. So people have been. People newly introduced to online streaming, wherever the fuck they might be, um, this might really be exciting. Or people that have that are currently using Fires because that's how that's how they came into the streaming world, and they just want some updated hardware and some new codecs and shit like that. Cool. No, good incremental update. Awesome. Yep, that's fine. Luna Game Streaming Service. Yeah, I don't know who this is for. <laughs> yeah. I. I I don't have any desire to play my games over the internet. And I know understand it helps people that don't have the hardware to you that, that don't own the hardware needed to play certain games and they can just get the streaming going and low latency. I'm in Alaska. There's no such thing as low latency. And I don't, I, I just, this isn't for me. I'm not going to knock it. It's just not for me. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm landing. I like I I literally don't know who would want this. I mean, I, if you could play really if you could play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater <clears throat> 1 and 2, the the remastered edition on Luna because you don't have a PC and you want to play against me and I'm not going to load buy, buy it from a PS4. Like mm-hmm. there there are certain situations where I can see this being a useful construct. It's just it's just not for me. Yeah, same. Yeah, so I yeah, so to to not dog it, let's move on because like, I I don't have anything, I don't have anything for it. Right, and that's that's really th- those are the main things in the uh, the Engadget article. Although, yeah, actually, yeah, that's what that's what I'm looking at now. I don't I don't see anything else. I mean, there's some other thing like there's um, Guard Plus. Uh, so if you have a, yeah, uh, an Echo was... device, you can use this thing called Guard. It integrates with uh, with Ring if you have Ring devices, but it'll basically sense. For fire alarm sounds, breaking glass, intruders, and things like that, it works really well with Ring. Like it, it you know, it, it's an extra layer if you're ring it with Ring. If you have a Ring security system, I like it a lot. They're doing Ring Plus, which can like to help deter things. It's a service that you're gonna have to pay for for forty nine bucks a year. Um, it's just basically more active version of of uh, uh, Echo Guard. I, I don't know that it's necessarily for me. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I definitely see its uses. I I only want to point out a comment that I just read in the uh, at the bottom of the in gadget article. A guy says, "I'm waiting for an Amazon robot girlfriend that I can whisper my shopping list to in bed." Legit. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are waiting for that. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw it throw the link to the article that we're looking at into the chat there. Yeah. Um, and this article will be linked in the show notes as well. And there are certain other things. Uh, Ring, which is an Amazon company, which is why we're talking about them. Uh, and, and encryption oh. to address security concerns. You know, like there's... there They did announce a lot of things. It's just... I just realized that this article is written by a friend of Diamond Club, Nicole Lee. Oh, yeah. She's, she works with uh, Engadget now. Yeah, I just I just realized that it was her article. Huh. Yeah, totally coincidental. Yeah, um, yeah, it's uh, it, it is what it is. I don't, I don't, I don't get excited about like like Amazon could come out and say, hey, we're going to give the entire country a free ring alarm system. It's going to be fully automated. Everything outside the house, nothing inside the house, because we don't want to know about your privacy and just not opt in on anything. It's just completely here's the stuff, and it's going to be amazing, and nobody can ever steal anything again. I'd be like. Yeah, but then Apple <laughs> Apple can come out and be like, "Yeah, we uh, instead of 
43 grooves on the um, on the crown of the Apple Watch. Now there's 42 because we just felt that it was a better aesthetic. And that's the release. Extra hundred dollars. That's the release. And I'd be like, oh. Yeah, I, see, that's where that's where you and I differ. Because like <laughs> my personal devices are are Apple. Like I'm very into the Apple ecosystem in that sense. But if it's a like if it would fall into the category of smart home, mm -hmm. I'm very much in the Amazon ecosystem. So I've, I've yeah. kind of like split my loyalties on that sort of stuff. Yeah. No, that's 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 where I'm at. I uh, yeah. I I just rearranged some stuff around the house uh, in in um, the Alexa app. Hopefully, it didn't trigger anybody. <laughs> it was such a pain in the ass moving three light bulbs from two different rooms into the dining room. So we got a mm. three light bulb chandelier in there now over the table, and mm -hmm. took two from our bedroom and one from uh, the, another room, and put those in there and had to rename them, redo them, blah 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 blah. It was such a pain in the dick. It seems like it was like in in. In theory, it's simple. Hey, just rename it and put it in a different group. You're good. No. Right. Sometimes it wants to remember the new name. Sometimes it doesn't. And then you have to, I had to tell the Hue well, app that it was a different name. Yep. It, yeah. It was, yep. it was the nitpicky and sometimes, shit. That made it sometimes like um, Echo devices will just not not remember like wh what room it's in or or a uh, smart plug. Actually, the, this, this has been a problem with smart plugs. Smart plugs will just, They'll just forget, like, oh, what, what, what was I supposed to be doing? I don't know. I don't know. Did, I, did you tell me that that a light is plugged into me? Uh, I don't know. I forgot. Yeah. I don't know what you told me. I, so, I, um, I have three three plugs that don't work for anything. They used to work. They don't work anymore. Yeah, and and they'll probably work again. Yeah. They just, I don't know what it is about the plugs, man. Like they just. Well, these particular like, plugs will, will only hook up to the Echo ecosystem through HomeKit. HomeKit won't let me install them anymore because I. Ah, I see. So. So is it, is it a HomeKit? It, is it a HomeKit issue? Is, is it an iDevices, a HomeKit or a, like I don't, or, or an iPhone thing? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's. <laughs> But they're sitting connected to each other over in my room, the mess that is my room. So. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So are you going to purchase anything on this list? By attrition. <laughs> I'm not going to replace anything with things on this list, but I might purchase them through attrition with the exception of that, uh, that camera, the, the car camera. Um, it says it's supposed to work by Wi-Fi or LTE. If it has its own internal LTE, is that something that's going to be an additional charge that I have to do myself? Will it be a part of my service fee for using Ring? Will it be an additional service fee on top of using the Ring? Like, there's just too many questions there. If it's if I have to get the plan myself, not going to happen. If I uh -huh. have to, like, if it's a WhisperNet thing where it just automatically works and I just have to pay to activate it, like, thirty bucks a year to activate it, I'm down. That's perfect. So. I read somewhere that that you don't like it'll get you you'll get the notifications for free no uh, n nothing nothing required right now if it's now as far as like the uh, storage like the video storage right. that that's probably the only thing that you would have yeah. an additional charge with but I would I would think that it would be packaged with you know with with what you're already paying twice for right because I have one here so, and one in Tacoma. But yeah, it, that, the, so right. for me, it's just questions. But that's the one device that is really intriguing to me because if if it's affordable and it doesn't cost extra for the service, like too mm -hmm. much extra, like, you know, if it's not outrageously priced, I would put that in all my cars. Yeah, that's honestly, I don't think I'm going to buy it, but that is, well, and like I said, I think it's only available for Teslas in the beginning. Um, but that is, that is the only thing that that really catches my eye as a consumer. Yeah. Uh, but I, from a distance, I'm going to keep my eye on that fucking drone because <laughs> I want to see where this goes. I have a hard enough time flying my Mavic Air through the house. I can't imagine that thing doing it on its you own. You fly it in the house? Why would you fly that thing in the house? Because I have a drone and I have a house. <laughs> Good lord, man! I'd fly it in the in the truck if I had enough room. 
Oh, you're insane. You're hey, um, I, before we before we start wrapping this thing up, I want to I want to give a shout out to a couple of shows. Uh, first of all, the VOD Squad, uh, Poodle Puncher and the boys, they reached 200 episodes of the VOD Squad, and I want to applaud them. Uh, their 201st episode is actually this week, um, so we we didn't have a show last week. I was going to congrat- yeah, congratulate them then on that, but that's that's a hell of a milestone. So good job, guys! And then also, I want to mention one more time the Have a Drink crew. They reached five years in their history, and uh, we had an amazing co-stream sort of event last weekend with them. Uh, but but again, guys, congratulations on five years. Uh, you guys are gonna gonna go super far. The, I know your show is gonna go at least a decade. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's got that kind of longevity. So keep that going. And then the final thing that I want to say, and we've mentioned it a couple times already, New Year's Eve Streamathon is upon us. Um, I've been getting the docs and everything ready for me to start requesting um, it's volunteers. A, it's as if as, as streamers and. All sorts of things. We, we we need we need production members. We need streamers. We need standby streamers and yep. standby production people. Um, <sighs> we need we we well we don't need on the list of we need streamers. We need production and standby production and standby streamers. That's what we need. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to do some graphics, if you can do some stingers, if you want to do some audio, some original audio, something like that. Like in particular, I'm talking about uh, other than because I already know we're going to get participation from our the people that normally do um, uh, BBJ, Sassian. You know, there, there are certain people that always help us out with things. But if you mm-hmm. think you have a, a knack for it and you want to throw it out there, graphics, transitions, stingers, music, any of that kind of stuff. You want to contribute? It's a worthy cause. It's worth if your name is Santa Claus and you want to record an advertisement, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> like yeah, if you happen to live within a six-hour drive of the Ether Bunny, I mean Easter Bunny, and you want to go see if they want to participate, like let's make it happen. Yep. Yeah, uh, so probably. I think by next week's show, everything will be official and um, out there for people to actually just click on things and put their name in it and actually sign up. Um, that should be that should be in place by next week. Uh, but if you know right now that you definitely want to participate in a particular way and you just can't wait any longer, Amos, what are some of the ways that people can get a hold of us? Well, you could reach out on Twitter to the show, which Kent and I both see, and that's at Ritual Misery on Twitter. Uh, you could reach out to me personally on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. You could reach out to Kent sure. personally. Yeah, uh, R M underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. R M underscore Del Noche. Or you could email us podcast at ritual misery dot com. Um, I mean, you can hit One us of on my Slack. Favorite in- way. In the Discord, you want to give them the Discord. Yeah. Why don't you, you should give them the Discord. Yeah, Discord's my personal favorite way to be reached by the community. And bit.ly slash RMP Discord will get you in there. Yep, yeah. uh, that's usually where we do the uh, the whole uh, after show, the post show. Which, indeed, indeed, it is. Which I don't which understand. We're wrapped- <laughs> I, I still don't understand how we have more people in the post show than we have on the show, but I. Beggars can't be choosers. It's it's, li- it's live streaming um, uh, conflicts, like like multiple streamers at the same time, and that's just it's just how that happens. We sh- we we need to find a new time. People have encroached upon our territory, and it's time for us to retreat. Hey, uh, <laughs> you could uh, find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Uh, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Hell yeah. Thank you for listening, for Kent, for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. <laughs>
Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y